those faithful and small will be entrusted with more verse 7 it says this then the word of God spread the number of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem and a great many of priests were obedient to faith priests obedient to faith that's crazy priests caused a lot of headache for Jesus priests they did a lot of bad things these were the guys Jesus was not able to reach these were the guys that really rejected Jesus apostles now I want you to see this one is they had global reach the word of God spread and I felt the Lord put on my heart and said this if you make prayer a priority and you change the way you do things and you change you Vlad first and your system this is what's going to happen there will be a global impact through this ministry the word of God will spread through YouTube, through Facebook, through social media, through our travels, through the prophetic encounters, through Yogi Bear and through internship. It will spread and people say what did you do? We did the right things at the right time. The word of God will spread. That's kind of global outreach. Number two, it says the number of disciples multiplied. It's the increase in impact we will see disciples multiply we will see more people giving their life to Jesus we will see more people serving in the home groups and we will see more healings and more deliverance the number of disciples multiplied greatly and lastly I want you to see this is that we will reach new territories it says this great many of the priests became obedient meaning layers of society disciples could never impact now not only they impacted but many of those people came to know Jesus. Why? When you're faithful with the widows in verse 1, God will entrust you with the priests in verse 7. When you're faithful with the widows, meaning you're faithful with what you have right now, the complaints, the stress, the anxiety, and you're willing to work with God and say, Lord, I want to put priorities in the right place. Lord, I want to bring different systems. I want to change how I do things. I want to change this and that. There is, a, there is a level that God has for you. Well, you will reach priests. For some of you, the priest is going to be something with your business that was never seen possible. For some of us, priest is something that is completely unattainable. Other people are seeking to reach priests. God will entrust you with that. It says nowhere here the disciples were interceding to reach priests. God entrusted them with priests because they faithfully executed their responsibility with the widows. Do faithfully what God has given you and God will open new seasons, new opportunities. When David Digga was here a few months ago, I knew that David Diga knew uh, Pastor Benny Hinn really close and I had this dream for a long time to meet Pastor Benny Hinn. Now I understand some people have their views about Benny Hinn and uh, views are really cool and we, we live in a free country everybody is entitled to their own views and I'm entitled to mine and I wanted to meet him and so read this book and really loved this book and I just I just wanted to meet him and David came and I just came from London at the time and so they blessed me me and my wife very very generously in London so I, uh, part of when people bless me, I look for other people to bless. So we help people in need financially in some other states and in here in our local church. And then we brought money to the church. And then I had a little portion that I've been doing for the last four years where from every trip I give to my pastor. Uh, my pastor, I give him a blessing just to honor him. This is my deal between me and God. And so I have this portion of finances, which is a large sum of money. And David Diga is in town. So I get this thought in my mind. What if I just bless David Diga with that money? So God will open the door to, you know, meet with Benny Hinn. It was just a thought, okay? Jesus was tempted to worship the devil in the wilderness. Don't judge me. So I'm like, no way you had that thought. <laughs> if you could only be honest with your thoughts. <laughs> anyway, so that thought, and then I voiced it out. I told my wife and I said, babe, what do you think? I was like, I'm not sure. But God didn't tell me to bless David Diga with that. I'm not against blessing even if God doesn't tell me but I felt that it would be a sort of manipulation and to the best of my ability I never did that. I didn't give or try to play politics with people just so they can open doors. I've seen God open doors where nobody could open doors and I did not want to get there because I paid for it. And so I remember I made a decision. I was like, no way. I'm like, I love David Diga. If I'm going to have something extra and God puts it in my heart, I'll be more than happy to bless my friend. But I'm not doing anything so he can create opportunities for me. We, we dropped him off at the airport. I blessed my pastor. My pastor, you know, he can't open those doors for me. But see, there is a God in heaven. 
he sees how you treat the widows in verse 1 and for some weird connection he makes connection in verse 7 with people that you have no relationship with or no influence with so David Diga texts me a few day, few weeks after and says, hey, just want to let you know that I showed this photo to Benny and he shows me the photo and I was like, no, you didn't. And he's like, I told him about you guys and everything and he's like, he's interested in meeting you. And I was like, well, great, you know, praise God. Two weeks after that, we're driving from Portland area. He says, could you pull over? And I said, uh, yeah. So I pull over and on a FaceTime, Benny Hinn goes on a FaceTime. I was like, oh, hi. Good to see you too, you know all right what is your name you know uh, so I kind of told him about our ministry and everything he's like Vladimir you need to come to Anaheim you know Anaheim this Monday for youth meeting you need to be there and I was like well since you're <laughs> asking and calling me like that you know I will go there <laughs> so I go there on Monday you know and I, I've seen friends who try to go there you know to, to meet him and you know you, you got to have connections with those people and then you know not only we were set right in front of him but that three times during the service some of you watched it you know he called me uh, uh, referenced you know our ministry and then he let me speak and stuff so um, last minute you know word came out of my mouth that it blessed a lot of people and I uh, had a lot of pastors even respond a lot of even connections come through that and when I came home after that you know and I'm gonna go there again in a, in a week from now uh, to, to, to spend some time with him and I really believe that one day he's gonna be here uh, also for a Holy Spirit conference now the point that I want to draw from this story is this is I genuinely believe that if you are faithful with the season that you are in and you work with God to get out of the stress in this season there's a reward that's waiting for you there's a reward that's waiting for your ministry in verse 7. God will take you there. God will open doors and you will be able to say, you know what? I didn't buy my way into it. I didn't manipulate my way into it. It wasn't because I was clever and brightest and I won the interview. I had the greatest resume. Honestly, I did my work. God did this.